Okay, so now I'm going to show you a demo of media queries and using HTML5 and CSS3. What I've got before you is a simple HTML document. And we can tell it's an HTML5 document because of the doc type declaration at the top of the file. Doc type HTML tells the browser that this is an HTML file. Now, there are certainly things that are the same in terms of HTML5. We have our number of well-known tags, like an H1. Let me go ahead and put in a hello plural site students. I'm going to go ahead and save that document. I'm going to switch over to my browser. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh, and you can see that the H1 shows up as normal. Not too exciting, so let's go ahead and add some more in terms of the functionality that I've been talking about. So I am bringing in a CSS file. So let me go ahead and go to the CSS file and the body selector. Let me go ahead and change the font family to something that's not quite so uh, ugly as the serif font that we had. So if I switch back over to the browser and refresh, you can see that now we have a much nicer font. Again, this is nothing new. What is new is the ability to be able to do things like set the background color to an RGBA value. So this gives me the ability to say, hey, let's make the background let's say black and give it a 50% opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, go back to my browser, refresh, and you can see that we have this sort of nice background color. Now, one of the other features of CSS3 that I can take advantage of is there are some new pseudo elements. One of the pseudo elements allows me to say uh, h1 after. And so after the h1, I'm going to go ahead and put in some extra content. So the after selector or pseudo selector is useful when you want some text to appear over and over and over or some style to appear over and over and over, right after or before is another one of the child selectors. I'm going to go ahead and put in some content, which will be um, desktop sized page. Okay, so let's go back and refresh. And you can see that it now says desktop sized page. Okay, so as I uh, was mentioning uh, during the slide part of the lecture that the enabling technology or one of the highly uh, enabling technologies in terms of this idea of responsive web design is media queries. So let me go ahead and write a media query. All media queries when they're inside of a CSS file we're going to start with the media. Then the I'm going to add the type, and so in this case, I'm going to say um, I want to do a media query based upon the screen, and then my expression is going to be maxed width, and let me say 768 pixels. Then because the my media query is after the earlier selectors in my CSS file, I can go ahead and put in um, body. Let me change the background color. In this case, let's make it um, let's make it red. But let's stick with that nice fifty percent opacity. And let me just copy and paste this to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to put in tablet size page. Okay, so again, what I've done is I've put in this media query. 
when this media query evaluates to true, what's going to happen is, is the browser is going to respond and apply those styles that are inside of the media query section because those selectors are coming after the earlier selectors. They're going to override those values and we should see something a little bit different. So let me go ahead and make sure I've saved this. Let me go back to my browser. Let me go ahead and refresh. And then the really cool thing about media queries is not only will they execute when the page is first loaded, but they will execute um, during the lifetime of the page. And so if I just resize the browser, you notice that it now says, hello, Pluralsight students tablet size page. And when I resize the browser back up, it's going to go to desktop size page. So this is a very simple demo, again, sort of the hello world demo for me for media queries. But I think it illustrates something very powerful, which is I've got one HTML page, one CSS file, and based upon the declarations in that simple CSS file, I'm able to make a responsive web page. Now in this case, I'm just responding by changing the background color and changing the desktop size, um, page text. But you can extrapolate that to many other things, things like logos and text and images. Um, anything that you can style with CSS, you can then change using a media query. And this is basically the foundation of this idea of responsive web design. Media queries are the enabling feature for responsive web design. So let me go ahead and go back to my code for a second and let's add a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead again and do a little copy and paste inheritance. Save me a little time and let's make another media query for 480 which is the very typical resolution for mobile devices. I'm going to change the color from red to blue. So I like blue better than green for some reason. And I'm going to change this to mobile size page. All right, so I've saved this. Let me go back to my browser and refresh. Now, nothing changed on the refresh, but if I go down, tablet size page, I get done a little bit further, you can see that this says this is a mobile size page. Now again, all I'm doing is changing the text and the color, but I can change more than that. Uh, when I get down to the mobile size, you know, one of the things that I see is that the text is wrapping, and the text is probably too big for the mobile devices because I want, you know, um, everything to be a slightly more um, uh, compact probably in my mobile device. So let's go ahead and go back to the CSS file. And what I'm going to do is input another selector for an H1. Now, you notice that I'm not overriding any earlier selectors because I didn't have one for an H1, um, but I definitely can do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, font size, and I want to change the font size to something smaller than what it is currently. Now, the question is, what is the font size currently since I didn't set it? It's being set by the user um, agent style sheet, which is the style sheet applied by Safari. All the modern browsers have a one tool of a kind or another that allows me to inspect things. I'm going to right click on this and say inspect element. That's going to bring up the developer tools for me. And if I click on the H1, it gets highlighted in the page, but it also shows me the CSS style rules. And you can see here that the font size is 2M. Now M or M's are a measure that are used for uh, fonts and other things. Using M's is a great idea when you're trying to build a responsive web page because if you use M's in terms of relative to the base M uh, size, which is 1M, your page and your fonts will be responsive to different devices that might have different uh, base M styles. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my CSS and I'm going to set the font size to I don't know, 1.2M. That's going to mean when I'm going to my tablet, I'm sorry, my mobile size page, it's going to resize the font size as well. So let me go back to my browser and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the developer tools and I'm going to refresh and you notice that now the font size is a little smaller. We go from blue to red and a bigger font size. I might even want to think about changing the tablet font size to I don't know, 1.8 or something and then we go back to desktop size page. So again, just to reiterate, this is not a very complex demo, but the demo itself I think is very illustrative of this idea of responsive web design. Now I have to tell you that normally when I give this demo in front of an audience, uh, people tend to respond very vocally. That is, once they see the page move from one size to another, um, they tend to respond with some vocalization. So I thought since you're all watching this on video, maybe you'd want a taste of that as well. Also, it gave me the opportunity to show another feature of Media Queries, which is actually that you can run Media Queries in code as well. And sometimes you'll need to do that because sometimes you'll need to have the ability to be able to find out if a media query matches inside of code and respond. So in this case what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of JavaScript which is jQuery and I've got a document ready function and then I hook up a resize function for the window and then I'm executing a media query I'm going to go ahead and drop this JavaScript into the page. And then what I need is um, some audio. And so again, this is just to show that um, in terms of HTML5, we've got a number of different uh, tags. So I'm going to say the source of this audio is uh, oo.mp3. Type equals audio slash mp3. And I'm going to give this audio an ID of oo. And I'm going to copy this tag just to save a little time. And let's change this to ah. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go back to my browser. Okay, so back in the browser, what I'm going to do is refresh. And then I'm going to go ahead and move the page from my desktop size to my tablet size, to my desktop size, back to tablet size. So Again, this particular demo is fairly simple, but it does illustrate this idea of being able to use HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript.